Ah, uh, no, so this is wrong. You don't want to put this here, and it's breaking the logical flow of the discussion and making it harder for people to follow. This is one of the rookie errors you definitely want to avoid. Hey everyone, Professor David Stuckler here. Today we got an exciting session because we're gonna dive into one of the most important parts of your paper to get your message right, to help your paper get accepted, to really be looked at by editors and reviewers like you're a pro, that you've done this thousands of times, and that's the discussion section. Unfortunately, you know, as I worked with a lot of students, I found there just wasn't a clear guide on how to write up this discussion section. It was only working with hundreds of them that I cracked the code and figured out what things were missing and they needed to get in there so they could write the section like they had done it thousands and thousands of times. And today I'm gonna give you our guide and we're going to roll up our sleeves and actually look at a paper before and after from a student who I'd been working with uh, that went on and got published incredibly well, but who was somebody who's experienced, had actually worked for over a decade in research but didn't have a system. And it meant that she was losing a bunch of time writing the discussion almost every time in a different way with whatever came to mind or whatever felt right, but not really having ever mastered or cracked the code that could make things simple and clear. So I'm gonna share with you a few key principles of the discussion and as ever the key components that you need to have as well as an outline and a guide that you can take this outline and apply it to your own work right away. So let's dive straight in to the main sections of the discussion. First, first paragraph, first component of the discussion section is a simple recap. What did you find? What were your big findings? So often I see researchers trying to describe what they did and it's like, hang on, wait a second, you already did that in your method section. You don't need to go back and remind everybody creating a lot of redundancy and unnecessary words. If anything, your reviewers and readers are gonna be skipping across sections. You wanna hit them right between the eyes with the big points of what did you find? What was the payoff of this whole study? And this should really align later on with your abstract and your results section. Your abstract is gonna be a mini snippet of the paper and whatever those main findings are need to be here. Before you ever write this discussion section, and sometimes I do see students say, hey, prof, I'm starting with my discussion section. I don't know what went wrong. It's often because maybe the results section isn't clear and maybe you wrote that results section before you had a result set and a clear set of three to five findings that you wanted to highlight. If that sounds like you, I got another video you need to watch to clear that up before getting on to the discussion section. So coming back to the discussion section, you should know and have as a bit of your north guiding star, what were those big three to five findings? And you need to recapitulate them simply here. And that is typically your first paragraph, one, maybe two. Second, this can vary a little bit across fields, but it's something I always recommend, regardless of whether you're in social or natural sciences, before going on and interpreting those findings further. We need to kind of acknowledge limitations. This is a great opportunity in the discussion section to armor up your paper. One of the worst things that happens is when a reviewer comes to you and says, aha, but you didn't think about this problem, and you're caught with your pants pulled down, and you're like, oh no. Instead, limitations is a great place to say, to armor up and say, actually, I thought about that important point and this is how I've already dealt with it. Or to deflect it, kind of like, here's a bull charging at me and I'm gonna like send it that way to say, well, future research needs to deal with that because it's beyond the scope of our paper. We got lots of tactics for handling those limitations, but it is better than to just ignore them and hope, oh, well, maybe the reviewers aren't gonna spot the elephant in the room. It's better to actually be out in front of that conversation and acknowledge them yourselves and try to say, you know, how you try to deal with that weakness. That's the very second section that comes out. And I recommend, at least at the starting point, and you know, you're writing discussion section for the first time and probably even into the future. Don't try to write a pull surprise here. Keep it linear, simple, and clear. That's what scientific writing is all about. So what you want to do, simply, first limitation was this, second limitation was that. And for each limitation, you want to say succinctly, what was the limitation and then how you dealt with it or why it's really not gonna affect your results. So one common flow is to say, first, well, we found that this was a major uh, limitation of the paper but we dealt with it in the following way. And by so doing, right, it's not gonna bias our results. Or if there is any remaining bias, it's gonna go against our hypothesis, making it harder to prove what we were hoping to prove. That's a bit of the flow. And this is gonna become clear when we look at a concrete study later on. Um, so after you get those limitations out of the way, often now you've kind of highlighted all the weaknesses. Now is a good point to remind your 
readers and reviewers, what are the strengths? So you might have something that often flows. Notwithstanding these limitations, we have several strengths. This can be where you can boldly say things and don't be shy about your contributions here. Some people don't like saying, oh, we did for the first time. I like saying that and the editors can always force you to take it out. I So I like having that language to say, for the first time, we did this. Or uh, often say maybe to our knowledge for the first time so you don't get a reviewer says, well, we actually already did that and you didn't think about that. So uh, uh, to our knowledge, for the first time we did this. We found that. We showed this. Highlight your strengths. You really want to emphasize the value out of your paper. And this is often speaking back to what were the gaps in the research that you foreshadowed in the introduction and that you were able to plug with your approach. And so this is another point where the discussion is in communication with earlier sections of the paper. By the way, you shouldn't really have fully fleshed out the introduction yet. We recommend writing the introduction last using our inside out writing method. But if you do want to guide on the introduction, check out this other video here. So you list out the strengths and that strength list can be similar. It can be a simple list just like you had uh, for the limitations that came previously. After the strengths, now is a good point to start turning towards interpreting the data. And this is where you have a small section, again, paragraph, maybe two, on coherence with existing literature. So you deepen the interpretation by saying, did we find things that were consistent with what came before? Did it contradict earlier studies? Did it move beyond them in some way? This is where you want to speak back to some of the important prior papers in your field and position yours in how it relates to theirs. Finally, after you got the coherence section in there, now you want to interpret what your findings mean for future research and potentially also practice because many of you are doing research to make a difference. And this is a point to say, hey, those of you working real world settings can use research in this way to make a difference. So that implications for future practice research often will have some communication with your limitations. For example, you might find that there was a lack of data in a certain area that you need data on. These are extensions. And these implications for future research in this section is a nice way to kind of foreshadow what studies do you want to do next. As a side note, if you're ever hunting for gaps in research, this can also be a nice section to harvest of papers to find gaps that are on the shelf ready and give you uh, ready to go research ideas that you can run with. So I like using this section to kind of roll out the red carpet for your next research. Often if you're writing a literature review for say a thesis, this section of future research is actually setting out what you're going to do in your next empirical chapters of your thesis. In a research paper, you can often follow scientists and authors who say these are this is what research needs to do. And then you later see them in a couple of years publishing a paper doing just what they foreshadowed there. So if, if you nail this outline, these simple components, paragraph by paragraph, you're going to get a great result and it's going to be simple and clear. So with that, let's turn to a real world example of a student's conclusion before and after that we worked on and you can see how we made simple changes to it. So let me pull this up and you can see here, all right, this student uh, made a few mistakes, started to revise, but a few things that need to be tweaked. So firstly, it went very, very long in describing all the interventions and the findings before getting to the limitations. You don't really want to do that. Also because you don't have that much space in your discussion. Be simple and clear and you don't want to deepen the interpretation here. You probably do have a lot to say but you want to come back to that later. So that is a major mistake. Short, succinct, simple. What are the main findings? Then this is a big mistake. You want to get right into the limitations next before interpreting them further. I know that you do see other papers sometimes put the limitations later on, uh, but I recommend our system that works really well and avoids confusion with reviewers who are already thinking, oh, these findings, but think about all these limitations that are there. You want to get these acknowledged up front, and psychologically, you want to clear the readers and reviewers' minds of those limitations, so in a way that you've opened them up to accepting the importance of your findings. So you, I hope that makes sense psychologically why you want to unblock that so that they can almost be opened intellectually and even emotionally to accept the good stuff that you've got. So the, the limitations come right here next. And you can see here this is going on and on. The limitations finally came down later and uh, then went to another conclusion. So this was completely missing the key sections on implications for future research and the implications for policy. And even here you can see at the end of this draft was still talking about the, the findings in the limitation section. So structurally this was just off. Another general writing principle you need to be aware of in general 
uh, the writing principle, is that each paragraph needs to make one point. And often in working with students, I find there are multiple things going on that you're fighting several battles. One is getting the academic writing right, because many of you have never had any formal training in academic writing, and understanding what content to put into different sections, because you also don't have a guide or outline for that, and you end up with something mashed together. And just imagine, you've spent years working on your paper, and this section where you're gonna write the payoff and the big findings falls flat because people are struggling to understand it because what you've written is a little bit like a bowl of spaghetti and doesn't tell a clear story. So that's why, again, we're not aiming for a Pulitzer Prize, but we're really placing an emphasis on clarity. So let me show you what this looked like after we cleaned it up. Okay. And here we are. First, we've got one paragraph saying what were the three big findings. And then we got right in here, we need to note limitations before interpreting further. And we distributed those limitations in this paper as this was a systematic view into two kinds. There were limitations from the search approach and limitations from the studies themselves. You'll notice too our writing approach, the paragraph, the first sentence is a topic sentence that explains what that paragraph is about and that paragraph makes one big point. Then we transition after the limitations to say what were the strengths. Notwithstanding these limitations, put these behind. Hey, now you're ready for our good stuff. and quickly and succinctly summarize the value added of the paper. Um, it also summarized then any uh, coherence with existing literature. We also in this paper, this is optional, had some incidental findings, not the focus of the paper, but we found something really curious that we do feel like this is a good place to point out. Another point that's really important here that comes up that I wanna share with you looking at this is sometimes students get confused what to put in the results and what in the discussion. The discussion is where you bring yourself back in and you are more free to interpret. The results, you're just kind of dropping your results and your findings. Here, you are more actively bringing the first person yourself back in and you can interpret and go further. So make sure you separate that out as you write your results and discussion section. And then here you can see we have very standard clear headings, the directions for future research and practice, listing them out and uh, what they were, there were several. And then we turn to for practice with finally a concluding paragraph that gives a little bit of a jolt of an inspirational message for the future. Uh, this is not something here that you necessarily need to do, but it's just a little something extra, a little extra flourish and embellish, kind of like putting a bow on the top of the present afterwards that you can do once you've got all the other nuts and bolts in place. Guys, I hope this is helpful to you. If you are interested in a more live demonstration session, I find a lot of students work really well by seeing how other students have tackled that same section in a live way. Uh, check out the link below, it's gonna help you enormously as you go forward. And if you are interested, we do offer free one-to-one -one consultations uh, to share with you a little bit about how using some of our research systems can save you a ton of time and help you publish a whole lot faster. You could eventually figure it out or you could take the shortcut and learn from a system that's been proven and has worked many, many times before for people with no research experience or who have struggled and failed before. And guys, I will look forward to seeing you more on the channel and here in our next video.